This question keeps coming up. How do I master Excel? Okay, I'm gonna talk about that. But first, I wanna let you know, Gorilla Data Analysis 3 is now available as an ebook. I'm gonna leave you a link for it. I'm excited about this book that Bill Jelen and I wrote, just came out. We should have a physical paper book next month. This is an update of Guerrilla Data Analysis 1 and 2. We did add Power Query, Dynamic Arrays, some of the other things that in Excel now that didn't exist when number two was written in 2014. But what's in the book now is what we call skirmishes. And those are the things that aren't directly Excel, but they impact what we do with Excel and data. One skirmish, dealing with octopus spreadsheets. Those spreadsheets that have a lot of things going on in them, different pages, but they aren't really connected like they need to be. Say if you make a change in a workbook, you should have one place to make a change if it has impact throughout the workbook but you have an octopus spreadsheet when you make a change and you have multiple places to make the change. I wrote that section and that's where I talk about the different constraints that you have. What if the client says, yeah, I understand this is a mess and we need to redo it, but we don't have, what do you say? You say it would take two months to redo this whole thing from scratch. We don't have two months. We got 10 days. That's the reality that you have to deal with. And you might have to add another tentacle or integrate a few tentacles. You do what you can. What I want to talk about now is another skirmish that I address in the book. Oz, I want to master Excel. There's different types of mastery and we got to break these down so that we can clarify what the request really is. And then we can begin to get at an answer or come up with some kind of a strategy. First of all, Excel is a tool. How do you master a tool? Mastery of a tool is like, say you take a hammer and mastering the hammer means you can spin it around, you can juggle it on your chin, throw it against the wall and it'll hit a nail. All kinds of things that would be great on a Saturday night in a talent show and you might win a hundred dollars. Nothing practical, but it'd be cool. Then there's the type of mastery of, I want to know everything in Excel. Yeah. Well, there are over 300 functions and countless features in Excel. Nobody knows everything in Excel. You've got functions like Kurt. Tan H, I am conjugate, odd F price. I have never used any of those in 20 years of working with Excel. They're there because there is a need for them, for some people. But for those people, would they need to do the things that I've done over the years, like scraping a website? pulling all the data in from 30,000 pages on a website. Somebody who's using the Kurt or Kurtosis function, they might not ever have to do that. Knowing everything about Excel is impractical, it's unnecessary. But then somebody says, well, what about people like George Mount, Ryan Wade, Jordan Goldmeyer, Sergey Baklan, Victor Momo. Well, hold on a second. They're not human beings. You can't
can't aspire to that. In order to be one of them, you had to have been born in another dimension, maybe 400 Earth years ago, and then get the assignment to come into this dimension where you and I are in a knowable form there in this other dimension with these supernatural powers and they bring those powers from 400 earth years you can't aspire to be one of those five people the other type of mastery being valued for what you can do with data and Excel. That often means picking what you're good at. Are you really good at data visualization? Are you good at cleaning data, VBA code, finance stuff, engineering? What do you need? What can you get really solid at to bring value? During my freelancing time, I used to get scared that a new client might think I'm a fraud, that they're gonna ask me something that I don't know. Well, turns out that in every project I've done, there was something that I did not immediately know. Where my value came in was, I might be able to solve something in a week that they might never be able to figure out or they'll keep putting it off and the problems compound. So it was better to pay me to go from my instinct, past experience, and then figure out everything else, fill in the gaps. Not a problem. But in order to do that, like I've said before, when I've talked about this, you have to see a lot of things over a long period of time. You're not going to get this in six months or a year. Okay. Also, I have told truths about myself. I don't like writing code. I've done a lot of it. I just don't like that mental space. So, I got to a point to where if a problem needed extensive VBA coding, I would help the potential client find somebody else. I don't expend a lot of brain power on keyboard shortcuts. I admire the people who do, who blaze through Excel. I've seen some fantastic stuff from people who use a lot of keyboard shortcuts. That is just not my style. Forgive yourself, relax, settle in, get ready to put in a lot of time and break out. Look for opportunities to see things that you wouldn't ordinarily see in your role. So maybe you manage shifts in a warehouse or a retail store or something. And you're used to working with times and figuring out who's getting more time or people start complaining about, I never get holidays or I'm constantly working weekends. Well, you can pull data and move it around, but then you're getting good at using Excel around these shifts and getting them scheduled. How about finding some inventory challenges? See what's happening there. Break out, break out. And then think of different things. How else might you use Excel? You're going on a road trip, figuring out gas and hotel and everything and laying out a budget and then comparing it against your actual breakout. Force yourself to see a lot of different things over a long period of time. Last, I've got my uncle hat on, and here is what I'm gonna tell you, okay? Cause uh, 
Sometimes your parents can be kind of square and really conservative with you, right? Because they want to keep you safe. But I'm the uncle that'll give you five bucks and let you try some licorice ice cream that your parents say, no, you're not going to like it. You're not going to like it. I'm not wasting my money. Well, I'm the uncle who says, look, take the five dollars, try the licorice ice cream. If you don't like it, it's out of the way. Now we all know. But a danger is if you start liking licorice ice cream later in life, you might start liking Sambuca. My uncle advice is learn how to clean data. That is an area where you can bring a lot of value because a lot of people don't want to do it. A lot of people are scared of it. They want to do the pretty, the fancy stuff, making graphs and whatnot making big behemoth formulas Woo! but somebody's got to clean the data and i have seen companies stalled because they got messy data stuff is locked in pdfs and they don't know how to get it out or they got it out of the pdf and don't know how to clean it it's all over the place somebody starts dragging sales around manually and then a week later they're like to hell with this whether you're working in engineering, marketing, the nonprofit sector, retail, enterprise level stuff, if you can clean data, you got some power. And I'll tell you one last thing. I talked with a journalist years ago. She was in Chicago and there's questions in the newsroom about the mayor is saying that some schools needed to close. And the mayor is saying, this is what the data says. This is what the data says. And the journalist keeps saying, well, show us the data. Eventually, the Chicago public school system is forced to turn over the data to this journalist. And guess what? It's in PDFs. It's all a mess, but it was all there. What wasn't there? The ability to clean it up and make it useful. Oh yeah, let me give you some of this effect because I got a new lens here. Check this out. You see how it cleared up and I'm blurry? Now watch this. Woo. 